45 tzaddikim went up in a storm to sit with Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. First row, all the tzaddikim to learn Torah from HaKadosh Baruch But we are left down here. It's not easy to speak about this. The Mount Meron tragedy, Lag Omer. But I was asked to say a few words, give a message of Chizuk. Of Nechama. How do we look at these things? What we say today is not directed towards individuals, not towards certain groups. What I'm saying today is directed towards myself. I happen to be talking to myself in front of a camera, and the mic is open, so if you want to listen to a private conversation, you're welcome to do so. If you get anything out of this, that will be my ample reward because I am just reflecting and saying out loud my thoughts at this time. It seems that in the last year and a half or so, we have been given by Shemayim opportunity to try and excel in a mitzvah which we normally put down. A mitzvah which we don't treat with such dignity and respect as we do to other mitzvahs. There are Tayyag mitzvahs in the Torah, 613 mitzvahs, but we only take care of 612. There's one mitzvah called Venishmatim. Watch yourselves exceedingly, as the Torah says. Venishmatim me'od l'nafshar seichem. That's not really what it means, right? That's not really what it means. And therefore, we take things lightly. So they gave us from above a year and a half to try and work on ourselves, to try and get better in this mitzvah. Says the Pelayoetz, there is no other mitzvah in the Torah where the Torah repeats itself and says twice the word meod, exceedingly. And then the Torah says again, like Watch yourself, watch yourself twice. It doesn't say that about Tfilin, it doesn't say that about keeping Shabbos, nor about Yom Kippur, but it does about guarding yourself, watching yourself. Being careful. One must make sure to watch himself from any danger, not only a sakana, a danger, but even chashash sakana, says the Pedagoids. Even a potential sakana, chashash. What's the reason? Because one hour of being here in this world, performing good deeds, learning Toya, is worth more, more so than the entire world to come. Because there, you just get the reward for what you did here. There is no other way of gaining more mitzvahs once you leave. As I'll say, don't enter a place of Sakana because if you do, who says they will perform a miracle for you? And if in fact they do, they will deduct from your merits. There's a famous story that appears in Masechet Bochus Daf Lamed Beis Amud Beis. The Gemara discusses a certain chassid, a righteous individual who was davening. And then an important minister came by and said, Shalom Aleichem, how are you? But this Chassid, this Davenik Shmonei, is looking in his sitter, he's not going to stop to talk to someone. So this minister stands and waits. I don't know how long he was standing there, 10, 15 minutes, until he finally finished his Shmonei, and he looks at him, at him and he said, you know, I could have chopped your head off. Why didn't you answer me? You know who I am. And this Chassid said, let me explain, let me explain. Imagine you were talking to the king and your friend comes along and says, Hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Would you answer him? And the minister says, Of course not. I'm talking to the king. And this chassid said, Well, guess who I was talking to? Melech Malchei Amlochim, the king of all kings. And somehow this minister was appeased by this. And the language of the Gemara is, Veniftar Oiso Chassid Lebeisoy. And he walked home. The chassid was discharged. He was fine. He went back home. Asks the Magen Avram in Orachaim Simen Kuf Dalit Seif Aleph, who gave him permission to endanger himself this way? This is risky business. Who said the minister will wait? Who said that he will be happy with what he heard? Maybe he will take his head off. And the Magen Avram answers, We must say that this Chassid knew this minister and he was sure that he's going to accept his answer. This is what the Magen Avram answers. However, the Peleyot writes, he brings from the Mephashim, commentaries say, 
When the Gemara says, V'niftar oisur chasid lebeisoy, and the chasid went back home, that's not what it means. V'niftar lebeisoy lomoy, he died. This chasid died, why? Because after all, he transgressed what the Torah says, V'nishmaltim, watch yourselves exceedingly. Maybe the minister is not going to want to listen to your excuses. He comes out, says the Pelayois, one who does go into a place of danger and rely on the miracle does two wrong things. First of all, he's transgressing what the Torah says, don't do this, but he shmout him. And second of all, they will deduct from his merits and it comes out that he switches the pearl, precious gem, to something not worth a dime. Like Moses says in Baba Kappa Daf Samich, that if there is a plague, one has to go inside go into quarantine, or run away. And one should not say, as the fools say, well, it's in the hands of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I don't have to do anything because HaKadosh Baruch Hu will protect me. Says the Peleyoyz, that's foolish, because one must make an effort. Ishtadus, you got to do what you have to do. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu will do what he wants to do. But why do we have to watch ourselves? Says the Pedagoyetz. The main part, main reason for you to protect yourself is an extension of your love to Ribbon Shaloyda. Because just like a person washes his tools, his vessels, he cleans them, he makes sure that he'll be able to use them because he loves himself and he wants to use his items, his vessels, so too. One must protect his body and soul. They should not become contaminated. Should not break, is it? Because they are the vessels to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They belong to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And you have to watch what belongs to Hashem. And then the Peleyot says something kind of frightening. If one thinks about it, with an honest, straight mind, one would arrive at the conclusion that if someone dies, there's no use in crying for the person who died. What will you gain? Will you bring him back? He's not coming back. Even if you kill him yourself, says the Peleyot, you're not going to bring him back. So why are you crying? After all, Chazal said, after one dies, there are three days for crying. Seven days of mourning. There's Shloishim, there's 12 months. Only if a person is a great individual, great Chassid and Tzaddik like Moshe Rabbeinu, they cried for him for 30 days. But otherwise, why are you crying? Is it important to cry? Should one cry? There's an amazing Zoya in Daf Chav Vav Amud Beis and Tikkun Yazor. As Zoya talks about Pasya, the daughter of Paro, opening up the basket and seeing Moshe Abenu. She saw the lad crying, and right after that it says, She had mercy over him. Said the Zoya HaKodesh, this is talking about Klad Yisrael. Lad, we are referred to as a Nar. The Navi Shaya calls us a Nar. He now Yisrael va'ohaveyu. Hakadosh Baruch Hu says, "I love Klal Yisrael. They are my lad." Now we are called a Nah. So now we go back to the pasuk. Ve'hine Nah boyche. The lad was crying when we Klal Yisrael cry immediately. Vatachamol alav. It awakens rachamei shamayim of the Shechina. It awakens the rachamei of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And the Zoyar goes on and says, a pasuk in Yirmiya says, "Bebechi yavo." They will come back. Redemption. Klal Yisrael will come crying. What does that mean? Bizchus bechia. Yiskanshun min galusa. For the merit of crying, we will come back from Galus. So yes, it's a good idea to cry. But what are we crying for? The Peleoids told us before that does it make sense to cry. But he explains, don't cry because you miss that person. Because, oh, he wasn't Zoyche to see his daughter going under the chuppah because he wasn't so to see his son's bar mitzvah says the Pelagiyot, all these things are vain because this world is oilam hasheker, it's all vain. The world to come is oilam ha'emes. So what should you cry about? One should cry because apparently we're not such great tzaddikim and because of us this terrible ordeal came about because we angered Melech Kel Ram Venisa, the exalted king who wants to shower us with good. That is his midah. We should cry because the tzaddik is no longer here to please the Kodesh Baruch Hu, to do his will. We should cry because we should do some introspection. 
and realize how we have to improve and do tshuva. If you cry just for the loss, oh, I don't, I'm not with him anymore. I can't see him anymore. I miss him. After that period of crying, three days, a week, three weeks, whatever it takes you to get over it and to move on, you didn't change. But if you cry for the right reasons, as the Pelioris details, because we have to change, that's a reason to cry. Then after you finish the crying period, you moved up. You moved up closer to Riboy Neshegoyna. The Goyen Mivilna. Just a few days before his daughter was supposed to get married, she passed away. And a few days after that, his mother came to him in a dream and told him, if you would have just known what you merit by the fact that you accepted the strict judgment on you, you, were, you would dance in her funeral more so than if you would dance in her wedding. As the Pasuk we say every day, Nusach Ashinaz before Baal Sheamar and Psuki de Zima, we say, it seems redundant. You turn my, my morning, the eulogy, to a dance. Great, that means I'm besimcha now, before I was sad. But now you repeat yourself, and the pastor continues and says, You open up my sackcloth. But now I'm happy. But you already said that before. Why do you repeat yourself? It's a beautiful little kuntas called Ima Shel Malchus, and there it explained. Hafachta mispadi lemachol li. Don't read it lemachol to a dance. Read it lemachul li. You know that's trouble, affliction, yisuim, challenges in this world, atones for one's sins. Hafachta mispadi the misped, the trouble, the affliction, turned it. To machul li, it atones for all the sins, and therefore pitach tasaki. Now I open up my sack, sack full of avelos, and it's empty. And therefore, v'ta'azreini simcha. Now, now I am glad. Continues the peleyoyes and says, there's another type of nechama that one should think about. To believe wholeheartedly, there is nothing bad that comes from above. Called the Avid Rahman al Tava with the Srabi Akiva Torah said Brahma Dav Samech, everything a Kodesh Prabhu does is for good. Even if he takes people away, he looks all the way to the future, to the end of time, and therefore one has to say a blessing for bad things that happen, just like one says a blessing for good things, because we know for sure that a Kodesh Prabhu planned it and it's for only for our benefit it is for good and just like there's a mitzvah to go to a person and comfort him, comfort him to give him nechama so too there is a mitzvah to be misnachim to accept words of nechama words of comfort and to accept the strict din of shamai strict judgment of shamai with love because whom did this come about from the master of the world who can do whatever he wants in his world and we are his servants, we are his flock, and we have to thank him and bless him for everything. And says the Peleo, it's one who does accept the Nechama. He shows that he has three things. Sechel Yashar, Das Nechoina, he thinks straight. And he has a Muna Shalema, he has pure and true, complete belief. And in fact, this is a halacha that appears in Shulchan Oach, or Achaim Reish, Chav Beis Seif Gimel, the Mechaber says. Chayav Adam Levarech Al Hara, one must say a blessing. For bad things that happen. Bedas Shalema Uve Nefesh Chafeitza, Kederech Shemevarech Besimcha Al Hatoiva, in the same fashion, the same manner that one said Abraha when he won the lottery. But why? Bad things happen to those who serve Hashem. It's their simcha. Why is it their simcha? Because once you accept it yourself, whatever happens, with love, this is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu decreed, it comes out that when you accept the bad thing, you're serving Hashem, and serving Hashem should provide us simcha. But the Mishnah Bua there in Seyyid Kotan Talit explains, because truly all the Yisurim for the afflictions, whether bodily, monetarily, whatever it is, it is an atonement for all one's sins in order not to have to have atonement in the next world. It's very harsh over there. In fact, the Medrash says, 
Yitzhak Avinu came to Avraham Avinu and says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I think it would be a good idea to have some affliction in this world, you know, to atone for one's sins, to awaken one to do tshuva. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, yes, that is a great idea and you're going to be the first one. That is why the passage says, When Yitzhak was old, he became blind. That was the affliction that he received. The Ramban in, Parash, in, in separate volume in, in Perek Yudalit Pasuk Aleph writes, When we know that we are sons to HaKadosh Baruch and He loves us more so than a father loves his son, we will never come to do what the Torah says, Lo is going to do. They had a practice when one died, just to cut their skin, cut their flesh. We will not do it because we will know that everything HaKadosh Baruch Hu does is letoiva, even if we don't understand it. Just like little kids don't understand what their father is doing, but they rely on him. So do we rely on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And perhaps that is why we cover our eyes when we say Shema Yisrael, to say we rely on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Everything. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem. You know, it's Chesed and Rachamim. It's the measure of compassion and mercy and lokeinu is strict judgment and we cover our eyes and we say hashem and elokim rachamim and din are one they come from the same source and we don't understand and we cover our eyes to say we rely on akodesh bohu and in fact strict judgment is rooted in great rachamim and we believe in this wholeheartedly this tragedy 45 tzaddikim were taken. Everybody knows the Gemara in Sukkah Memhe, where the Gemara says there are 36 tzaddikim in every generation. And the Zoyar, it says there are 30 tzaddikim. But there is an opinion brought in Chulin Tzadi Beis Amudalev that there are 45 tzaddikim in a generation that the world is sustained for them. But normally we understand every generation has 45 tzaddikim. But perhaps now we understand a new meaning in it sometimes maybe. 45 tzaddikim have to go in order for the world to continue to exist. This is perhaps alluded to in a pasuk in Eicha, Lamentations, Hey, Chav Beis, the pasuk says, Katsafta aleinu ad meyod. If you were extremely angry with us, meyod, very, has the same numerical value of 45. Mem is 40. Aleph is 1. Dalet is 4. That's 45. And in fact, we go back to what we started with. Watch yourselves exceedingly. Me'od. Very. Mem, Aleph, Dalet, 45. The Pasuk in Nitzavim, Perek Haftes, Pasuk Chav Gimel in Sefer Dvarim says, And all the nations will say, Ve'amu kol adoim, Al me'asa Hashem kacha la'aretz azois. Why did this happen? Me, 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 45 in Gimatria. Ma chori ha'afa godol azed, the pastor continues. For what is this great wrath of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Ma, me, me, 45. So why, why did it happen? In Tehidim, 74.9, the pastor says, Oso seinu lo ra'inu. Ein oid navi, there are no prophets among us. Velo itanu yodea adma, and we don't know why. Velo itanu yodea, we don't know ma, adma, mem hey, 45, we don't know. But there is a question in many people's mind. How is this possible? They were shluchei mitzvah. They were involved in a mitzvah. They went to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Just a few minutes before, they all accepted on themselves the yoke of heaven. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. They all yelled. In Psochim Davches Amud Aleph, we learn Shluchei Mitzvah Eina Nizoikim. One who is involved in a mitzvah cannot be damaged, cannot be harmed. So how is this possible? This question starts much before this. Much before this terrible incident in Lad Ba'omer. It starts back in Chaye Yisrael. Why did, why did Salve Menu die? She was 127 years old, but why did she die? Rashi says in the first pasuk, he brings some Chazal. Because she couldn't contain herself hearing what happened to her son. What almost happened to him, he was almost slaughtered. Akedas Yitzchak. Wait a second. Avor Avinu is doing a mitzvah. In fact, the Torah says, it's such a great mitzvah. Why does the Torah call the knife, instead of calling it a sakin, 
the Torah says Ma'achelis. Avraham Avinu reached to the Ma'achelis. It's a long word. You can say it in a shorter way. You can say it Sakin, a knife. Why does the Torah call, call it a Ma'achelis? And Chazal bring, Hashem brings it. To tell you, all the Achilos, we are being sustained by this mitzvah, the merit of that mitzvah, until today. So it's the greatest mitzvah in the world. So how is it possible that Sarah Imenu died as a result of that? One who's involved in a mitzvah cannot be harmed. Avraham Avinu is now a widower. How is that possible? Mahavan Reb Chaim Kodiyevsky Shlita in his second time where the car explains we're looking at it in the wrong way. Sarah Imenu didn't die as a result of the mitzvah. And Rosh Hashanah is decreed who will live and who will die. How one will die. How one will live. So on Rosh Hashanah, Seven months ago, it was decreed that these 45 tzaddikim will die. But since they were tzaddikim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu turned it around that they will die while doing a mitzvah to get another merit, another schus. In fact, there is an amazing medrash in Koheles Rabba Parsha Gimel, the medrash says, if somebody dies close to doing a mitzvah, it is counted as if he did all the mitzvahs, he was just missing this mitzvah, and now he completed the 613. And the Medjah says the reverse is true as well. If one dies, goes by to performing, to transgressing an Aveya, it is counted as if he did all the Aveyas. He was just missing this one Aveya, and now he completed the job. Both walk complete, says the Medjah. These complete in their righteousness, and these complete in their wickedness. These Tzaddikim were involved in a mitzvah. They had the schus to die while doing a mitzvah. They didn't die as a result of the mitzvah. They died because it was their time. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu turned it around that they will die doing a mitzvah to give them another schus, another merit, another mitzvah. Behind the scenes, I re recently heard that there were three that came to complain to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Who were those three? They weren't happy with their laugh. Which we say every day. Shalishudis, the third meal of Shabbos, and Malach HaMavis. Aleinu L'Shabeach came to Kodesh Baruch and said, you know, it's not right. People turned me into Tfilah Saderech. People seeing me with one leg, they're already out the window, out the door. They're running out. Nobody says it with Kavana. Some people skip half of it. They don't even say it. They're in the car already. Shalishudas came and complained to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know, the first and second meal of Shabbos, people eat fish, chicken and meat. Shulet! Me? Egg salad. If I'm lucky, tuna salad. What's going on with my Shalishudas? And Malach Amavis came to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and complained as well. Everybody curses me, I'm just trying to do my job. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Aleinu L'Shabach, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to plug you in in the middle of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. You're going to be the highlight of those prayers. You're in the middle of Musaf of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. In the silent repetition. Don't worry. Don't worry. In the silent prayer of Shmones, Musaf, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, nobody is going to move while saying you. They're going to give you respect. The Shalish Shudas, the Baruch Hu said, don't worry. All the Rebbes will call you Rava the Ravin. It's a very auspicious time, and the Hasidim will honor you. Singing, saying, Divrei Torah, it will be a very special time. And to Malach HaMavis, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, don't worry, don't worry, no one will ever blame you. You know how it is, you go to a Shiva house, people look for those that they can blame. It was his poor nutrition, it was this disease, he had it for 15 years, blood pressure, he had high cholesterol. There was oil spilled on the road. It was the terror attack. Well, it was that police officer. It was this, it was that. It was wet there on the steps. There were so many reasons. Everybody is at blame. Says the Kodesh Baruch to Malach Amavis, don't worry. No one will ever blame you. They will blame everybody else. The message is clear. It's only natural for us. It's an instinct. To find the blame and to say, he is at fault. And when you do that, I don't have to change. Aval is, the holy tribes said, 
אבל השמים אנחנו. We are at fault. So what do we have to do? What should we change? לב יודע מה רס נפשו עושה שלוי ורמלך, each one knows what he has to get stronger on. Perhaps this is another meaning in Pirkei Avos where the Mishnah in Perek Beis, Mishnah Tess Zayin says, לא עליך המלאכה לגמור, however, ולא אתה בן חוירין להתבטל ממנה, it's not up to you to complete, but you are not exempt from it. We have to do some introspection and to figure out what we can get stronger in. says call Israel Arabim Zelaze we are all guarantors to one another and that's how we normally understand it but the Toimer de Voira the Moshe Kodovero he explains differently call Israel Arabim Zelaze what is the language of Arabim it comes from the root of Ta'arov it's a mixture because there's a little of me in you and there's a little of you in me that is the deep meaning of call Israel Arabim Zelaze so what should we do Each one should work on himself to find out what we need to get stronger in. But there is one thing that's universal. It applies to all. And this is a secret for success. An amazing Baal HaTuri. At the end of Parashas Devarim, beginning of Parashas Vayeshana. Vayeshana starts with the word, Vayeshana El Hashem, Vayeshana El Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu is davening to Kodesh Bochoi, I want to go into Eretz Yisrael, asks the Baal HaTorim, and why now? Why does Moshe Rabbeinu decide to daven now? Why not in Parashat Sre'e? Why not in Shoftim and Kisei Tzei Nitzavim Vayelech? Why now? The Parashat is called Vayeshanan. He pleaded, he davened to Hashem, because that's the first word of the Parashat. But why did Moshe Rabbeinu decide to daven just here and there? Why now? Says the Baal HaTorim, look at the last Pasuk. In Parshas Devarim, the previous Parsha, the Pasuk ends. The Parsha ends with the Pasuk saying, Moshe Rabbeinu says to Klal Yisrael, Lot Yirahu, don't fear the enemies. HaKadosh Baruch is going to be with you. Said Moshe Rabbeinu six words. And you have to carve these six words in your heart. Chizakti es Yisrael. Ulai Yerachem. Alai, said Moshe Rabbeinu, Chizak Tiyas Yisrael, I gave Klad Yisrael Chizuk. Now is a very opportune time to daven. Ula Yerachem Alai, maybe now. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give Rachamim. He will listen and accept my prayer. We learn from this Baal HaTuri. The greatest secret to success. For HaKadosh Baruch Hu to accept our prayers is to give Chizuk. To be mechazek ourselves. To be mechazek others, to give chizu, constant chizu, and when we do that, chizak ti es Yisroel, ula yerachem alai, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Mirz Hashem, will share us with chesed, with rachamim, with mercy, that in Mirz Hashem we should be, we should merit to see in our own eyes. Chizuk, be mechazek yourselves, be mechazek others, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will share us with chesed and rachamim, that in Mirz Hashem, We will see soon, speedily, in our days. Amen, Peomi.